Hello, this is Mike. Um, I've been working on uh, packaging FreeCAD in such a way that it is uh, useful for uh, being accessed uh, via web browser. Um, right now, I'm going to show kind of the uh, uh, the interface and what you get with the uh, the latest update I just did. I implemented uh, multi-user, um, uh, basically kind of like a login. There's no password. It's just basically user management right now and file management, but uh, it's kind of the start of something. Um, so basically, uh, I can go and type in a username. So I'm going to call this test, and I'm going to hit create user. And it says user created, which is all good. Um, now, if I hit login, it shows me uh, this new session button, and if I click that, it's going to take a couple seconds because it's doing all the stuff it needs to do to spin up a, a new Docker container, and as soon as I hit OK there, it's going to wait until that Docker is ready and uh, connect us up to it. We'll give it a second to log in. Okay, so the first time you run this thing, it's going to tell you that there's no user settings. So that's basically the, uh, the toolbars and all that. So it just told me that it was loading those from the server, which is all good. Um, and it takes a second for the icons to all load, but they'll cache after the, the first time you, you load it. Um, and here we are. We are connected into a FreeCAD session. Now, you might notice that it's a little bit laggy on my computer here. I'm actually running the server on my computer, which is like a, a Chromebook, so it's not spectacular for doing this. Um, I should have a different server to run it on uh, tomorrow uh, for setting up a, a basic little cluster of these things. Okay, so right here we have our workbench picker. So you can select your workbench. I include two workbenches that aren't in the default build of FreeCAD. I have the Assembly 2 Plus workbench, which is the uh, the assembly workbench I found to be the easiest to use and and work with and didn't crash all the time. Um, and then the other workbench I included also is the uh, the sheet metal workbench. Um, so the sheet metal workbench it seems to work pretty well and I've been pleased with the output from it. So I uh, made sure that it was in here. The rest of these is uh, just the regular workbenches that are included in FreeCAD. Um, I don't have them all listed. Uh, I figured I'd start out with just the uh, 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 the basic ones for now, um, per the suggestion of some folks on the forum. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, so if I go and I like click on the sketch icon, I can go and create a sketch here, and you'll notice how it switches the workbench automatically and all that. Um, I can go and draw something here. Yep, I got something drawn. Maybe I want to go and dimension something. I could go and dimension it. Boom, I got something dimensioned. I'm going to close out of that. And uh, I'm going to use the shift key and right click to swivel because um, the, the two button um, spin rotate thing isn't working uh, via the web client right now. And um, there we are. I got a little solid created. Now, if I save this, um, I'm just going to save this to, um, uh, let's call this test file one and that's actually saved on the server um, and next time I log in with this user account I'll have access to it and on the server there's a folder that gets created in the the root of the file system called FC users and if I do an LS in there 
you can see how I have that test directory. And if I CD into the test directory, which is my test user, uh, we'll see that that file is there. Um, so that's, that's all being stored on the server. Um, we have the icons up here, which can be uh, edited, uh, and the tool groups can be edited. Um, basically, if I right-click on a tool group, I can move it left or move it right, or even uh, remove it, and I don't want to remove that tool group. Um, I could do the same thing with icons, uh, move them left, move them right, um, delete them if I want to. <clears throat> If I, uh, if I just right click in here and I go over to a uh, new tool group, that will create a new tool group and it's going to prompt me for a name. So I'm going to call this test tool group. And now I have my tool group here. Um, yeah, there it is. Um, I have my tool group here. If I want to move it around, I can. Um, if I go into Edit Icons, this takes a, a couple seconds to load because it loads up the full palette of all the possible icons that FreeCAD has. So it takes uh, a little bit of time to, to, to pull them all. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice how all of these tool groups showed up. And I can scroll to the right. Um, yeah, and you can see how there are a lot of different tool groups all showing up at once. The, the ones that are pink are ones that are excluded um, from this particular workbench. So in this particular case, um, I have some of these tools and I have these guys, and then I have the, uh, the common ones over here. Um, and these tools have been excluded from uh, the rest of these ones. These all these pink ones are for other workbenches. Um, so if I were to say switch my workbench to the spreadsheet one, you'll notice how everything else turns pink and these two light up. Um, if I wanted to add a tool group to a workbench, um, I would just switch over to the workbench, right click, and do this toggle exclude from workbench, and now that that's a white color, if I close out of the icon editor, you'll see that that's there. Um, if I right click and I uh, toggle exclude, it goes away. Um, if I go back into edit icons, I could see them all again. Um, over on the left here, you have all of the icons in the program. Um, some of them haven't been linked up yet. So if you, uh, if you click on one of these guys and you find the icon in this list, um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what these are. But, uh, yeah, basically you can click on an icon here and uh, assign one by just clicking on something over here. So let's just say this one, and I'm just going to grab that icon. If I give it a second, it should update. There we are. So that's the icon that it's going to use now. Um, if I want to add that icon to one of these palettes, I can just drag and drop it up there. Give it a second. And it should... Well, maybe it did. Okay. There we are. Drag and drop. Okay, there we are. So you can just drag and drop the icons up into the palettes. Um, if I want to get rid of that icon, I can just hit the little X and hit OK. Boom, the icon's gone. Um, if I hover over icons, I've got the little tool tips, and you can modify them if you want. Um, and yeah, this is basically all the icons. If you're looking for a particular one, if you just hit Control-F and you type in something like extrude, you can go and find that icon, and it looks like there's a couple of different extrudes out there. So, yep. Yeah. Um, if you've gone through and put the effort into setting up, uh, palettes and groups, you can, uh, you can right click and you can do save toolbar configuration and that'll let you download a JSON file of your toolbar configuration. 
Um, if anybody ends up going and doing that, and especially if they go and they do that for the um, the uh, the finite element analysis stuff or the uh, the mesh toolkits, that would be really really awesome uh, to get those icon palettes fleshed out and to get the uh, the tool groups set up for those. Okay, well uh, that's pretty much it for now. Um, there will be more updates to come. Okay. Let's stop recording here.